I should be sharing my screen now. Yep, we can see it, the floor. Okay. Um, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the capabilities we've developed under a project here at the National Renewable Energy Lab called Scalable Integrated Infrastructure Planning. Uh, the majority of those capabilities are, are kind of captured under this power simulations.jl package and it's centered around power systems optimization, particularly sequential optimization or production cost modeling. So um, the uh, let's see. I, so I'm going to run a quick demo here if everything works. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to run a quick demo with a live, this is a live notebook running in the background. And um, yeah, so power simulations.jl, if you haven't gathered by the extension there, it's all written in Julia. Um, it does a number of things. The main set of uh, capabilities are kind of aimed at production cost modeling, but in, encompassed within that, there's a number of other capabilities kind of highlighted here by, with unit commitment, economic dispatch, where you, you may not be running sequential optimizations problems, but just a simple single pass uh, multi-period optimization problem. Uh, optimal power flow through an integration with powermodels.jl. We've, we've supported, uh, a, I think, 36 different formulations of AC optimal, full nonlinear AC optimal power flow, as well as uh, the, the standard formulations for the linear SDC approaches. Um, we also have a Newton Raphson uh, iterative, just power flow solver, non optimization. Um, and then we're working on uh, some, ex some extensions to, to do uh, a variety of things, but the most near term ones are the area, area control error calculation and then the subsequent. Uh, simulation of automatic generation control. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So uh, running this live, just a few dependencies where there's an examples repository that kind of sets up some paths and 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 it has a bunch of nice things for um, nice examples for the various capabilities that we've built. Um, and I can point you to that in a few minutes. Uh, then there's power systems, which is our data specification. Power simulations, which is what we'll mostly be talking about, is the modeling specification. Express is just an API to the Express MP solver. And then I've just set up that solver with a MIP solver with a relatively relaxed tolerance for speed. And then finally, power graphics is a package that that we have to show some of the results from the, the power simulations results. So in for the data, for this quick demo, we'll use the RTS GMLC data. We, we support a few different data formats for parsing. We'll support the map power data format. Of course, everybody does that, right? And then um, we've got some raw data, dot raw file format, and not all these formats support all the data needed to do a variety of different things here. So in some cases you need to augment things. Um, but then there's this tabular data format, which is, uh, you know, based off of what I, we published the, the RTS GMLC data set in, but it's very flexible. So basically, if you have CSV data files similar to what Daniel had presented a couple minutes ago, um, you should be able to parse those in relatively easily. Um, so I've just wrapped up about five lines of code into a simple function here called load RTS. And this takes a second to run here because it's actually parsing all the all these uh, data files, including all the, the time series files for 8760 time series. It compiles the system and then we have this little HTML report of what it put together. So these are all the different elements of that system. And then it includes a forecasts. So these are the time series data for uh, for the various elements. And, and in this particular, uh, data set, the, the resolution of that time series is hourly, and then we have effectively a year's worth of time series that starts at uh, the first of the year in 2020. Um, so yeah, just do a really, really simple uh, production cost model doing sequential unit commitment problems. Um, there's a lot of flexibility on what you could do here, but we'll just uh, set this up fairly standard. So in this particular, have a little bug there. So in this particular problem, we'll, we'll treat things mostly standard. So we'll you, in this case, we'll do uh, DC power flow, um, and then you know do the 
key here is that for thermal units, we'll do basic just a unit commitment formulation. And this, this report kind of describes how each device in the network is going to be formulated according to the formulation labels we have. Of You've course, you can minute, go. Uh, Clayton. Okay. Of course, you can go through and, and actually uh, look at the jump model. Um, there's a lot of flexibility on how you set up the sequence of the model. So you can do 48 hour problems or, or 24 hour problems or however you'd like. Um, but ultimately you can sim set up a simulation and build it. And then uh, once it's built, it will execute. And uh, the express problem should take about uh, 10 seconds or so to run here. So um, actually now that we're doing DCOPF, it's, it'll take a little bit longer. Um, then in with the results, we basically support data frames uh, coming out of it. And then finally a, a, uh, a, 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 a plotly plot using the power graphics package to do dispatch stacks or a variety of other uh, summarization plots. And so that was kind of my quick demo. All of this stuff is is available in uh, the SIP examples repository um, and the other packages are listed here. So happy to take questions. Great, thanks. Uh, this is Yixin from Intellectual Ventures. Uh, so for first, uh, I think Andrew did another great uh, project about this, and we, we learned quite a lot from many of Andrew's projects. Uh, so one of my questions here is that, do you guys use uh, Ciplex or Groovy or some commercial solvers uh, for, for this package, like kind of linked to that, this package to have like better computational performance? Uh, the second question is, uh, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit more about how we can contribute to this package and uh, yeah, uh, things like that? So um, yeah, to your first question, so we are building pack, uh, optimization problems using the JUMP package, uh, Julia for Mathematical Programming. Um, it, that package is an abstract modeling language it, in itself, and it ha they support APIs to uh, most, maybe all of the commercial solvers, uh, as well as a number of free solvers. So in this example, I use the Express commercial solver. Uh, it runs using CBC or any uh, free solver that would support integer variables. Um, so it basically supports all the solvers. So you, it's easy to swap that out. Um, as far as contribution, everything that we've built is released under a BSD3 license. So uh, it's all on the Git repositories that are linked here. I should have actually just shown the, the, the extensions, but um, they're all posted on GitHub. Uh, we have some a very basic uh, uh, collaboration license or contributing license agreement to contribute, but we'd happy, happily uh, accept uh, PRs or make suggestions on how you could do extensions and whether or not they make it into the core package is kind of a, a discussion that we we would have to have uh, depending on what you're interested in doing. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Marco has a question. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, just a quick question on the wording uh, because uh, from different fields you hear different usages of uh, simulation. When you say simulation, you actually mean the sequential solution of different optimization problems, is that correct? In this particular example, uh, yes. Uh, so simulation here is even more general than that. Um, so far, what we've built is mostly centered around optimization problems. So a simulation is the sequential simulation of multiple optimization problems. We can also solve an, a single optimization problem, um, and we don't generally call that a simulation, um, then we are qu quickly, as this uh, slide denotes, we're, we're, we're quickly trying to support some power system dynamic simulations where you are doing a simulation of, or the solution of, of some differential equations problems. Okay, thank you. Um, Severin has a question. Hi, Clayton, this is Severin Ryberg. Um, Hey, uh, I was just trying to make sure I was understanding what you were describing. 
um, or is each time step solved independently and then like the result of that is informed from the result of the previous time step? Is that what's going on or is it still an optimal foresight type uh, solution? So in this case, uh, <laughs> yes, each, so this case is, um, let's see, one more slide, I'm gonna go back. Uh, so what I've done here is I've, I've said that each, each optimization problem contains 24, uh, 24 time steps, so 24 hours, and then each optimization problem is solved in, uh, well, in a sequence such that the initial conditions of the optimization problems are informed by results from previous solutions. So there's a there's an initialization challenge to that so that the first problem that you set up has to have some information in it. Um, we, we have some routines around that, but then going beyond that first one, every subsequent problem is informed by the results of previous problems. And that that to me is the crux of production cost modeling. And if you're if you're trying to represent how these systems operate through time, that's pretty critical. Great. So thanks a lot, Clayton.